Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Welcome to a Jada and Stitches live stream. Mr. and Stitches is here, pushing buttons. I startled him out of his reverie. Hello, everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome. It's uh, Valentine's Day this week, so I thought we would show a little love to the kitchen because uh, whether it's Valentine's Day or not, chances are you're going to be in it. <laughs> cooking or cleaning or something um, and I thought it would be fun to revisit our Fair Isle style heart from last year's calendar blanket and make a dishcloth with it. I love this image so much that when we first designed it I actually had three little um, samplers because uh, ah, I couldn't decide on colors and I couldn't really decide on whether I wanted to make it full or open or anything. I think I like this one the best. So I'm gonna be using the uh, the open, the original open style, but I wanted to have all three on uh, the screen so you guys could see it today. And I've got my graph. We've also got the graph. Mr. and Stitches can throw it up if we need to. And I'm gonna talk yarn and stuff in a second in order to turn this into a handy dandy little dishcloth. But I would like to start the stream by thanking Lynette <laughs> <laughs> for giving us a very generous super chat right off the bat before we even got going here. So thank you very much, Lynette. And um, I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. I hope you're all kind of looking forward to a, a week that heads us closer to spring. I like, I like thinking that way because I know there is still some snow in the forecast uh, for points east and uh, it's still going to be cold for a while, although, um, you know, Maybe all those groundhogs had it right this year. Maybe we will get an early spring. Let's hope, anyhow. <laughs> anyway, um, today we are going to make a dishcloth using our uh, heart sampler. So the Fair Isle style heart image, it's sampler sized. And I'm gonna be using cotton. I've picked out, oh, every solid color I could find in my, my collection here. So it's size four, medium weight, 100% cotton. This is dishcloth cotton. So it's not mercerized. It's just that sort of soft spun cotton, good for dishes. And instead of using a five and a half millimeter hook, which is what I used in the pattern, I'm going down a full size to four and a half millimeters or a size seven, because I want my stitches to be a little bit tighter since this is going to be a dishcloth and it's gonna get pretty heavy use, which means that the stitches will loosen up a little bit. So I wanna make sure that I start with a slightly tighter tension. Hi, Nico. <laughs> Nico, our gifting ninja in the house. Thank you, Nico. Nico has gifted a membership and it looks like Crochet Crazy has won it. Welcome back, Crochet Crazy, and congratulations. Thank you, Nico. Uh, and the usual, along with my hook, I've got a pair of scissors and my yarn needle. And um, yeah, we're gonna pick some colors. We're gonna decide what colors we're gonna make today's dishcloth out of all the pretty colors I've got here. I've got, I've got silver, which I thought was kind of nice. And then I've got red, I've got a hot pink, I've got a peach, yellow, a lime green, an aqua blue, a periwinkle blue, and a purple. Um, there's purple right here. So I've got a whole bunch of different colors. I'm only gonna use two um, because I'm gonna make it like the middle one. So a background with a color A, and then the color B to sort of make the heart outline. And I'm gonna have the A again in the middle because I really like that. Um, having said that, the solid heart is really cool too if you wanted to um, use the whole thing or if you're using, like I did here, I used a self-striping yarn. So if you used a self-striping yarn or a variegated yarn, it would make your heart very interesting. Contrary to that, you could use the self-striping yarn or the variegated yarn as your color A and then use a solid color for the solid heart in the middle. And I think that would also be very interesting. So a couple fun options there, <clears throat> excuse me. And this one is nifty, um, but I feel like maybe if it was reversed, like the dark, the color A was the darkest and then the medium was the outline and the lightest was the center. Um, I don't know, this was sort of a little sampler I tried out to see what the middle of it would look like if I changed colors and it's fun, but it's not my absolute favorite. So I'm definitely gonna be doing this one today because I really like that kind of fresh outline. Uh, but those are the options. Um, you'll recognize this if you did the blanket along with this. This is the graph I'm gonna be using. It is a 20 stitch by 11 row double crochet graph. And I will be sort of shouting out the numbers of stitches in each color as we go, just like I did in the tutorial. And of course, we have a tutorial for this very heart. If you wanna see that um, sort of a little more concisely, we've got that tutorial linked in the description box down below. It is the Fair Isle style heart tutorial. 
And um, there's a whole bunch of good things down there in the description box today, actually. We've got affiliate links for some yarn needles. You guys ask us about these all the time. Uh, so we've got affiliate links. These are all Amazon affiliate links. Uh, we got those for the yarn needle. And just for fun, we've got some affiliate links for the stuff that Mr. and Stitches and I like to sip during our little coffee clashes here. Um, I'm having an Earl Grey tea today, one of my absolute favorites. And we've got some of our other favorite coffees and teas and hot chocolates, all available uh, through affiliate links. So if you want to help support the show and you want to try something a little different other than, say, buying a pattern or something, um, then please feel free to check out the affiliate links, especially if you already buy from Amazon. If you use our link and then you do some other shopping, um, it kind of helps us out. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> Uh, Tim Hortons is not sponsoring this video, although hello Tim Hortons, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, but uh, the affiliate links are really helpful. I mean, I'm sure you guys, if you watch any YouTube at all, you know that a lot of people use them. So that's really, uh, really handy for us. And one last little plug for our Etsy shop. Since Valentine's Day is this Wednesday, all of our heart related patterns are on sale. That's our little sneaky sale of the day. So feel free to check that out too. I love that tea. Yum, yum, yum. Earl Grey. Okay, my darlings, what two colors am I going to use for today's dishcloth? I will be making this one, the one you see in the middle. Um, I could go light background, dark heart, like I did here. I could go dark background, light heart. I've got all these different colors uh, from silver all the way, red, pink, peach, yellow, green, a couple of blues, and purple. Um, so what do we think? Uh, should we do a poll or should everybody just sort of like shout it out in the chat? What's everybody feel like? Kicking Horse Coffee is excellent too, Dizzy. If anyone would like to support us, if they already use Amazon, you can use our link and then you can buy whatever you want. Um, it can be Kicking Horse or whatever your favorite thing is. It, mm -hmm. it all helps support uh, here us here at the show. So uh, that's how that works. I also want to say, um, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, but um, you can also set up like this fun, re like it's really handy. It's a reoccurring purchase. Like Amazon will just auto fill um, a purchase like if you regularly buy some staples like you know paper towels coffee uh you know hair dye stuff like that um and you need it every couple of months or every three months you can have a standing order and then if you set up a standing order you actually get you save like five or ten percent which is really great and considering how expensive um all of our groceries have gotten <laughs> in the last few years um it's nice to be able to save some money anywhere you can and uh, who doesn't like having everything just automatically come to the front door? I love that. <laughs> um, getting back to the poll, we can only do, I think we can only do four options. Yeah, we can do four options. So we're going to have to narrow it down um, and then maybe do a poll or just go with the chat replies. Yeah, I'm just looking actually, I'm seeing some nice collections here. Uh, creamy background with a pink heart, silver background with a red heart, silver background with a blue heart. Um, I like the idea. I like all those ideas. Um, I really enjoy changing the colors. So like for me, um, I like Valentine's isn't just pink and red and white necessarily or purple. It's like, you know, I like, I like my hearts to be, I mean, hearts can be any color. Um, but I really like this. I really like this silver. So I'm considering using the silver. That's why I pulled it out today. Plus um, there's a silver kind of in the floor of our kitchen. So I think that this would be kind of nice paired with it. Now I'll go with whatever you guys like, but the silver's nice. It's kind of a light color and it's a bit different than using white all the time. So I thought that'd be kind of nifty. Um, I will say silver and blue is pretty. That would be very pretty. What if, what if we go default silver and then let everyone vote on the second color? So we, you know what, maybe we'll do that. That's a great idea. So silver is gonna be the A, the background color, but then maybe first let's decide whether it's gonna be like a cool colored. Okay, so we'll go cool and warm and yeah. then we'll do a second poll. Yes, okay. so first poll will be, you know, so consider this background Got you covered silver. Over here. The first one will be a cool. Um, so these are cool colors, purple, blue. I might even, I don't know. Does the lime fit into the cool or the warm category? I'm not sure. 
could kind of go either way. It's kind of neutral, I guess. So these are the cool colors, blue and purple. This is neutral. <laughs> and then I've got warm colors. So I've got the red, the pink, the peach, the kind of the yellowy bit. And whatever one we choose is going to wind up on the silver background. So that's the silver background. Ronald and Kathy Jones in the house with a very generous super chat. Hello, cousins. How are you? They write, good morning, dear cousins. Happy, happy morning to you both. We wish you a breathtaking Valentine's Day. Oh, wow. Thank you. And a flawless week. Love you both. Your cousins south of the border, Kathy and Ron. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I heartily agree with that. Um, a breathtaking Valentine's. Well, I did promise the mister I would make him a chocolate cake from scratch. So uh, I'll try and make it breathtaking, I guess. You guys all heard that. <laughs> You heard that. <laughs> you all heard it. This is all recorded now. <laughs> Can't back out. Okay, so here's, I'm going to actually do this a bit differently. Here are the cool colors, so we can see them all on screen. Here's the neutral, and then here are the warm colors. How's that? Does that, that look kind of, wow, that looks juicy. Ah, colors. I love color. Um, well, now you've messed me up. I started the poll, the poll with cool and warm. I didn't I didn't put neutral. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not sure if anybody's going to be interested in a lime green heart either. Lime but, green with with silver. But it'll be it'll be gray? an option. I yeah, know. I mean it's not terrible. Everything looks good with silver. It looks kind of fresh. You know, it almost looks a bit neon. It's all right. We'll ask in the second time. Um, Kimberly, thank you, Kimberly, with a very generous super sticker, offering me a cup of tea or coffee. I love it. I will take that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, at least 100 votes in the poll, and then we will call it, and then we will pick the color from there. We're almost there. We've okay. got 98 votes so far. It's difficult. It's really, it's tricky. I well, like... This is a close one. This one's really close. So here's, here's... Oh boy. Here's the, um, the silver. I feel like, honestly, I feel like it would go kind of, it would look neat with any of them. It's going to change the feel, but I think that's kind of fun. Can you hold the silver up to all the colors so we can kind of get, like, put it to the left and then the right? So yes. we can get an idea. Let me just shove this up a little bit. Combination. Can we see everything if I do this? This poll is 50 50. Oh We're going to have to give it more time. <laughs> How's that? Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, I have, just to go through the colors again, I've got red, a warm, very, very warm pink. Uh, I wouldn't call it hot, but very, very warm pink. A peach and a very light yellow. I've got this limey green here, an aqua blue, a periwinkle blue, a purple, and then of course the silver is going to be the background. I think that's kind of fun. And you know what? While we're picking this, I'm going to start because we know that this is going to be the background. So let me just get this going while we pick the heart color. If you're making one along with me, you want to grab your color A, which is the background color of your graph. And we start with a slip knot and we chain 21. This is a double crochet graph. So chain 21. Okay, we have a slight lead here, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. There's 138 votes. Here it comes. Okay. I'll put my gray back there so we can see what I'm talking about. Silver and warm colors, 53%. Silver and cool colors, 46%. Wow, how awesome is that? Okay, so warm colors it is, no problem. I will put these pretty little guys to the side. Um, that still leaves me with this... I, I feel like this is kind of on the cool side as opposed to warm. I would say that's cool. Um, but I'm going to leave it in the grouping just in case. Um, like, I've got, maybe this is, uh, looks a little easier. So what I've got here is red, obviously. And I've got a, a hot pink or a warm pink and a peach. I feel like the peach maybe isn't contrasty enough. Let's do this properly. I'm going to put that to the side. We will hold each one up as we go. So obviously, red and silver, that's going to look, uh, that's a nice contrast, that red and that silver. The warm pink is very close to the red, but it's a little more, well, pink. So that's kind of fun. Uh, pink and silver is very nice. Hello, Aunt of Angels. 
with a very sweet super sticker. Thank you so much. <laughs> that is Auntie's first super on a live stream. Thank you. Uh, the peach and the silver, eh, they're both kind of washed out colors, so I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure I'm liking that. Same with the yellow and the white and the and the silver, I should say. The yellow and the silver is kind of also kind of similar. That's kind of fun though. I like that limey green and the silver. It's got kind of a I'm not sure what the word is I'm looking for, but silver and lime green. That's kind of fun, kind of funky, kind of fresh, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, so those are the options we've got here. I'm seeing red, hot pink, warm pink, warm pink, red, warm pink, warm pink, 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 red, red, pink, pink, red, pink, green is new, <laughs> pink, I like the peach, if not pink, lime, um, hello from Alaska, hi there, Rotina, peach, red, black with variegated pink yarn, sure, go for it, uh, I don't have any, well, I do have some black, but it's very difficult to see the stitches, so I won't use black today, um, but I do like that idea. Um, 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 pink, 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 red. So it looks like it's down between pink and red, for sure. Uh, okay, so let's put these guys to the side and we'll do one more pull. The red and the pink are very similar, um, but I one's started, just a little bit darker. I started a pull that has red, warm pink, lime green, and, and the regular pink, or the lighter pink. And the peach? Oh, maybe the peach, yeah. Sure, that that's a great pull. Yeah, the yellow, the yellow's a little too washed out, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't vote for the yellow. Um, I don't see anybody at looking for the yellow anyway, so that's cool. All right, so. So a few edits on that poll. Siller is actually silver. Yeah, <laughs> this is silver. And the pink at the bottom, so the fourth option is peach. And the chart. A, you're going to need a, a legend. I see I, Iris asking for the chart. This is the chart. I'm going to show it every once in a while, and I'm going to tell you, you know, how many stitches we're doing at a time, so no biggie. Uh, no worry about that. Plus, Mr. Stitches also has a digital version that he can pop onto the screen um, every once in a while. So we've got the chart available, and I'll be pulling that down every so often. Hi, Robin! Robin with a super chat. Thank you, Robin. Robin just said, I wanted to say I love Monday mornings now. I wonder why. <laughs> Thank you. We love them too. We were actually just talking about that this morning, how much we've come to really enjoy Mondays because we do this with you guys. This is a lot of fun. Um, okay, uh, while you guys are deciding on the heart color, uh, if you are making one along with me, you take your A color, which is the background, in this case it would be the yellow, I'm using silver, and you chain 21, you double crochet into the third chain from the hook, so you count back one, two, three, find the third chain, double crochet into it, double crochet into each chain all the way back, that will give you 20 double crochet stitches in total. And while you're doing that, Mr. and Stitches has put the um, the graph up. I'll also just show it to you down here. We This is a full mirror image graph, so it doesn't matter which way you come at this, but if you want to be a stickler, the, oh my goodness gracious, Renee, thank you. Thank you for picking up a pattern. The right-handed will start reading a graph where the number is. So this is, this is row one, the little numbers over here. Right-handed would start here and then start here. So the right-handed people always start on the side of the row where the number is. Left-handed, you're just the opposite. You look for the blank side. So row one, you would start over here. Row two, you would start over here. Row three, you would start over here, etc. But because it's mirror image, if you get confused or lost, it's okay. It's always gonna look the same no matter what side of the chart you start on. Row one, as you can see, is all color A. In this case, represented by a blank or white uh, square. So every single stitch in row one is color A, in my case, silver. So I'm going to double crochet in every stitch all the way back. That'll be 20 stitches and they'll all be silver or color A. If, if anyone just needs a quick glance at that graph, just uh, let me know in the chat and I'll pop it on the screen. Yep. We came prepared today. All right, so about a hundred more, I guess a hundred view, hundred, whatever you can get uh, the poll to that's got a decisive answer um, for color and uh, oh, silver and warm pink is the winner with 39%. 
Red was second with 27%. Lime green. I know, I like that too. 17%. I might do one just for fun later. And pink, which is the peachy color, is 14%. So we're going to go with the warm pink, which is this color right here. So these three can all go to the side. And I'm just going to bring these up, leave them here. And that's going to be my new color. Great. So let me make sure I've got this coming. All right, so that's my color B. My silver is color A. I've got my scissors and my yarn needle here. And this is the actual, um, this is what it's going to look like when all the graph work is done. And this is the graph. I'm just thinking maybe I'll keep the graph somewhere around here, right here. And I can just sort of pull it down if necessary. All right, double crochet in each chain all the way back so that you have 20 stitches. Every row will have 20 stitches. There are 11 rows. And while we follow the graph, I'm also going to kind of read out how many stitches in each color we need to do as we work this little sampler together. Then we're just going to put on a simple little border and that's our dishcloth. I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook, also known as a size seven, because I want a slightly tighter tension and that will also make a slightly smaller dishcloth for me. I prefer a smaller dishcloth. A dishcloth about this size with a border is perfect for me. Um, because I find uh, when I'm doing dishes, I don't want a great big heavy floppy thing. So I prefer <laughs> I prefer a slightly smaller dishcloth. All right, that is the end of row one. That's 20 double crochet. Um, the chain two at the end does count as a double crochet in this case. So you have 19 official double crochet stitches and your turning chains count as a double crochet. So that's 20 altogether. Chain two. The chain two at the beginning of every row counts as a double crochet, so you do not use this stitch. So that's the first stitch of the row. It's also the last stitch you made in the row before. Because we're using the chain two as a double crochet, you don't use that because the chain two stands in for a stitch and is using it in lieu of a stitch. So you're just focused always on the next stitch and the remaining, basically the remaining 19 stitches in a row. Every row begins with a chain two. Every row begins with a color A chain two. So you will always at least be changing colors with your color A, or I should be turning turning the row with a color A. And for row two, let's take a look at our graph here. Row two, we first bring in our color B. It's just the two stitches in the very middle. So row two starts over here for the right-handed, over here for the left-handed. We work nine stitches in color A, two stitches in color B, nine stitches in color A. So let's get those first few stitches going here. Hello, Shelly. Shelly's popping in with a super chat. Thank you so much. Shelly says, y'all always come prepared. <laughs> well, I would like to think we do. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shelly. So this is stitch number eight, I'm working. So chain two counts as a double crochet. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have one more stitch to do in color A before I change to color B. So every time there is a color change, the stitch right before the color change begins with the first color, in this case, color A. You work the first half of it with color A, but you don't finish that stitch with color A. You're gonna finish it with color B. So now it's time to bring in color B. I'm going to find the middle, hopefully, of this little ball of yarn. There it is. And I'm going to start with a slip knot. Not worrying about the tail, I will weave that in later. I'm going to keep my yarn B kind of above. I'm going to join it from behind, meaning that um, I'm going to sort of, instead of having it on the front, I'm going to have it on behind, or I'm going to have the, the B color to the B, to the back of my row two to start. doesn't matter which side it starts on, uh, but you just want to make sure that you flip it every row because that kind of helps keep the neatness and the consistency of your stitches. Um, it'll make sense a bit more a few minutes from now, <laughs> if that's new to you. I'm going to finish that stitch now with the color B. So I've joined B. 
With a slip knot on my hook, I used it as the yarn over to finish the first half of that color A double crochet. And now I'm gonna carry my color A as I work two double crochet in color B. So double crochet into the next stitch. Actually, I'm gonna pull that little short tail out of the way and I'll weave it in later. The first of those two stitches is a complete stitch using B. And then I start the next stitch with B, but because it's the stitch before a color change, I only work the first half of it with B. I drop B. I'm not carrying B. I do not need to carry B. I switch back to A. Tighten up on that B stitch a little bit, not too much. And then the rest of the row, those remaining nine stitches is all color A. So nice, easy start. Chef Don is asking, could you do this in single crochet? Technically, yes, you would do two, you would repeat each row twice if you wanted to use single crochet because a single crochet is roughly half that the size of a double crochet. So every row would be repeated twice. Um, but I have tried that with these stitches. And even though it's a tighter, uh, it's a tighter stitch, obviously, because you're using color or single crochet, but I find that because there are so many color changes, um, like you're switching back and forth literally twice as many times, I feel like it, sh it just sh looks a little bit more pixelated. Um, just personal preference. I mean, if you don't mind that pixelated look, then it looks a little, it looks a little bit like a cross stitch. Um, then yes, you can do it single crochet. You just have to do every row twice. So that is row two. Remember the last stitch of every row is worked into the top of the turning chains because the chain two counts as a double crochet. So you'll have nine stitches in A, two stitches in B in the middle, nine stitches in A, and that finishes off row two. And we're going to move on to row three, but not before I have a sip of tea. Yum. Love it. Hello, Vima. Vima has been a member for 40 months. Thank you, Vima. Vima with a membership milestone says, hi, Jada. Happy Valentine's Day to you and your family. Love the heart pattern. This is going to make something with the pattern for sure. Lovely. Love, love. Thank you, Vima. And Nico. <laughs> Hi, Nico. Thank you. Nico, gifting ninja, has just gifted five memberships. Thank you so much. Let's see here. Katie, Dawn, Sylvia, Sylvia B, Sylvia J, and Lisa have all won a membership. Thank you so much, Nico, and congratulations, ladies. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So let's take a look at our chart. We're into row three now. Row three, we have a little bit more B and a little less A. We start with seven stitches in A. We do six stitches in B and seven stitches in A. And of course, if you're left-handed, you're coming at it from this side, but it's exactly the same because it's a mirror image. So seven A, six B, seven A. Remember that chain two that begins the row because that's your turning chain also counts as a double crochet stitch. I'm going to move my pink yarn so that now it's facing me. So it was behind me when I had my work um, on the previous row. And since I'm turning my work, I'm just moving it so it doesn't get all tangled. So now it's sitting facing me, but it doesn't matter whichever side you start on. You just make sure it flips every row. Skip that first stitch. It's already used. We're going to double crochet now into the next six because seven stitches in A is what the row begins with. I'm going to get some slack on my silver here. I'm also trying to crochet a little tighter than normal, just so that I can um, start this dishcloth with a slightly tighter tension, because I know it's going to loosen up a little bit with use. I'm beginning my seventh stitch. So stitch number seven begins with A. I place my A to the side. I will be carrying it, meaning I'll be crocheting over top of it. I pick up B right from where it is, and I finish that stitch with B. Not too tightly though, because you see there's a little bit of a carry. So that B reaches up to finish off that stitch. Not a big deal though, because I'm going to crochet over top of it. 
I'm now going to crochet carrying A using B. So I've got my A on top of my stitches. I'm holding B. I'm going to double crochet into the next six stitches. Hi, Barbara. Barbara's been a member for one month. Thank you, Barbara, with a membership milestone. Glad to see you here, Barbara. So I double crocheted over top of that little reach of pink, so it's disappeared, and I'm working over top of my A color and carrying it so that it is where I need it to be when I need it next. And before I actually use it, so I start stitch number six with B, I drop B completely and I leave it right here to the front where it started. I'm going to just pull on my A just so it disappears, it tightens up a little bit. I don't want it gapping out between my stitches. So that's six. Started the sixth stitch with my B, finishing it with A. I am not carrying B, it just needs to sit where I've left it so I can pick it up to use it again in the next row. And the last seven stitches of the row are all A. Christina says, when I get to about a quarter left of yarn, it starts to tangle. Any ideas on how to make it stop? Yeah, usually if you're, um, if you're pulling from the outside or the inside, you might find that the last few uh, lengths of yarn want to twist. And that twisting can create a tangle or even what looks like a little bit of knotting. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, try not to let your yarn bounce around while you're crocheting. Because um, the more it spins and tumbles, the more it twists up on itself. Um, just pause every so often. Like when I'm using yarn, I just pull out like about two yards of it at a time. And that way I know it's not going to get all tangled up on the work surface in front of me. And then by the end, when there's a little bit left and it maybe wants to twist, do the same thing. Just hold, slow, hold it and just slowly pull some out. And when you feel a little bit of... of, of um, uh, objection <laughs> just pause pull it out and t chance and then try to pull on both sides of it gently because chances are it's just twisted itself into it's not a real knot it's just like a, a twist or it's it's uh, it's strangling a loop of its own yarn so it's not really a knot it's just kind of like twisted around on itself so you just sort of gently play with it a little bit stretch it out and and if um, if you can sometimes if there's if it's not too heavy pick it up and let it unspin because sometimes yarn wants to, some yarn is really twisty, and if you actually hold it, you'll see you'll see the remaining 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 bit of it spin underneath you because it's been twisting and twisting and twisting. So just just try not to uh, pull out too much yarn at a time. When you're getting down to the end, just pull slowly pull out like a, a yard or two at a time, and that will stop it from wanting to constantly twist and knot on itself. I find that helps. I hope maybe that'll help you too. All right, that's row three. Row four, right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. We are now entering into this part of the pattern where you can you leave the middle open, like I will be, change colors to a third color to make the middle a third color if you want, or just continue to use B all the way through to make it a solid colored heart. Entirely up to you. Uh, the pattern is six in A, three in B, two in A or C, if you're changing colors to a third color. 3 in A, or I'm sorry, 3 in B, 6 in A, and that's the row. If you wanted to make it solid, it would be 6A, 8B, 6A. So that's just something to keep an eye on. Um, and we chain two with row, or with color A, that counts as a double crochet. I'm going to move my pink yarn back behind me again. And it's six in A to start, so that's number one. I've got to do five more in A. All right, there's stitch number five. I'm starting it with A. I'm going to lay my A down so that I can carry it over top of my stitches while I work over top of it, picking up my B. 
I'm going to finish that stitch with B, not too tightly, because I'm going to have a little bit of a, a reach back here, but I'm going to crochet right over top of that. I'm going to double crochet, making sure that when I stick my hook through to the other side, I'm, I've got that reach of the pink yarn on this side of the hook so that I'm working over top of it. So I'm not missing it. I'm, I'm kind of like, it's almost like I'm pulling it uh, away from the stitch so that I crochet over top of it. So that's stitch number one. I'm going to do two more in that hot pink before I switch back to A. But if you're doing it a solid color heart, you're just going to keep right on working with color B. I start the third stitch with B. I switched back to A. I'm now carrying B as I crochet two stitches using A. Start that second stitch with A, but I finish it with B. And I'm constantly just sort of pausing and gently tugging on my yarn just so I don't have any gapping color anywhere. Finish it with B. Carrying A, I work three double crochet in B. That third stitch starts with B. I drop B, tug on A a little bit, and finish it with A. Now, B can just leave, I can just leave it right where it is. I don't need to carry it. I'm going to work double crochet in the remaining six stitches all the way to the end with A. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us on the Monday before Valentine's Day. This is the uh, give a little love to the kitchen broadcast. <laughs> give a little love to the kitchen. Uh, I like to decorate for uh, the holidays not necessarily go over the top, but it's fun to do things like change out the dishcloths in the sink. I think that's always kind of cute. All right, that's row four. Row five. The bit of the heart widens evermore. It's 4A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 4A. Very easy to remember. If you're making it a solid heart, 4A, 12B, 4A. All right, I'll leave that right there. Mr. and Stitches can uh, put that up on the screen if anybody needs it. Chain two, turn with your color A. Chain two counts as a double crochet. And my pink moves back to in front of me so that it is facing me on this side of my little dishcloth. And I'm going to work three more double crochet in A. I start that fourth double crochet with A. So I've got the chain two that counts, two more, and then I start stitch number four with A. Let it sort of stop so I can carry it. I pick up B. I'm going to have a little bit of a carry. I'm going to give myself a little bit of slack here. Finish the stitch with B. Not too tight because I don't want to pull my stitches out of alignment, but I am going to work over top of this little carry. Now I double crochet four with B, carrying A. I'm going to start that fourth double crochet with B, tug a little bit on A. Finish that stitch with A. And now I'm going to work four double crochet in A, carrying B. If you're making a solid heart, you're just working all the way through here with B. Keeping my tension a little on the tight side. There we go. I start that fourth stitch in A. Give myself a little slack. Tug on B. Finish it with B. And now I have four more double crochet in B. I'm carrying A because I still need to use A. I'm 
I start that fourth stitch with B and I'm going to bring it to the front, pull on A just to make sure I don't have any gapping color, finish that stitch with A, B is out the front, I don't need it anymore so I don't need to carry it, and then it's the last four stitches are in A. That last stitch is in the top of the chain two. I'm purposely making things kind of tight here, but that's okay. Come on, there we go. All right, so still 20 stitches per row. 4A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 4A. Or if you did it solid, 4A, 12B, 4A. All right, A little sip of tea. We are, that was the row five. So we're into row six. This is the halfway mark of the, the entire graph. So we're halfway through the graph at the end of row six. Row six, right-handed, you're over here. Lefties, you're over here. 2A, 4B, 8A, 4B, 2A. Now, if you're making a solid heart, it would be 2A, 16B, 2A. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Mr. and Stitches can put it up if you need to see it. I will call it out as I do it. Chain two, turn, my pink is going to the back. Let me just wind up this little outside tail so that it doesn't want to interfere with anything. There we go, give you a little slack. So, B is to the back. I chain two with A and turn. I double crochet to start with A, but I'm immediately switching to B. So I'm gonna grab B, finish that second double crochet of the row with B. I've got a reach, so I wanna make sure that I, I grab it when I double crochet over top of it. I'm carrying A, so I stick my hook through. I'm making sure that I've got the the uh, B color is to the inside of the work because I want to work over top of that reach. And I'm going to grab it there too. And I am double crocheting four stitches in A. I start the fourth stitch in A, or I'm sorry, B, four stitches in B. I drop B and I pick up A to finish that fourth stitch. So I've got two A, four B so far. Carrying B, I'm gonna work eight in A, but if you're working on a solid color heart, just B all the way through. Oh yeah, there was uh, the Super Bowl yesterday, right? I know absolutely nothing about football, so I won't pretend that I do. I just, the only reason I know that it was happening this year is because uh, I heard it was happening in Vegas. And I thought that was kind of neat. Feels like it would be a nice place to sit and watch a, a live game of anything, actually. All right, that's eight in A. I started my eighth stitch in A, dropping A, I'm picking up B to finish that stitch, making sure I tug on it a little bit because I don't want anything showing through to the back. Switch to B, four double crochet in B. Get a little slack here. Start that fourth double crochet with B, drop B completely, tug on A a little bit, finish it with A, and the last two double crochet of the row are A. All right. That's row six. We're halfway done, that little graph. 2A, 4B, 8A, 4B, 2A. Or if you're doing it all solid color, 2A bumpering a 16B marathon across the middle of row six.
Lovely. All right. Chain two turn. The chain two is the uh, is A, and we're immediately switching to B <clears throat> because in row seven, right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. The first stitch is A, so that's our chain two. We immediately switch to B for three. A for five. B for two. A for five. B for three. Back to A for the last stitch of the row. If you're making it solid, a solid heart, it's 1A, 18 and B, 1A to finish. So I'm immediately switching. My pink is now to the front. Making sure I don't, I always keep my, my A on top here. So B's to the front. I'm going to work three double crochet in B. Carrying A. I have a bit of a reach, so I'm working over top of it. And I start that third double crochet with B but I am switching back to A. So I'm gonna carry B. I need B in the middle. So, so far I've got one A, three B. I'm back to A again now for five as I carry B to the middle. I start that fifth double crochet with A, dropping A, I'm going to carry it, tug gently on B, I'm going to finish that stitch with B, B for two, so one whole stitch in B, and then I start the second stitch with B and switch back to A. Still need B though, so I'm going to carry it. Five double crochet in A, carrying B. Welcome, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in today. A little, uh, little love for the kitchen. And yes, uh, all of our heart patterns all of our heart patterns, whatever they may be, are on sale in our Etsy shop today. So please feel free to avail yourself of that. And um, also we've got uh, a link to the original tutorial in the description box down below. So if you wanna see it um, a little more kind of concisely, then that's available for you too. I am starting the fifth stitch in A and I'm gonna finish it in B. Carrying A, I'm working B for three. Whoops. One, two, and three. Start that third stitch with B, drop B, finish it with A, and the last stitch of the row is A. And that goes in the top of the chain too, which is nice and tight because I am trying to be a little tighter than I normally would here since this is a dishcloth. There we go. So that was row seven. Chain two, turn. Still chaining two and turning with color A. I'm going to move my pink to the back now. And give myself a little bit of slack on my silver color. All right. Here we go. Row eight. Stitch number one, right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. Stitch one is our chain two, that's an A. We switch to B for three, back to A for three, B for six, A for three, B for three, A for one. Or if you're making a solid heart, it's exactly the same as row seven. Stitch number one and stitch number 20 are both A. Everything in between is B. That's if you're making the solid heart. So like before, I immediately switch from A to B for my next three stitches. So I'm gonna have a little bit of a carry, but it's very, very short. 
So when I stick my hook through, you'll see that the carry is on the wrong side of my hook. I'm going to make sure I pull it over just so I'm crocheting over top of it, pulling up a loop and double crochet and carrying A. double crochet in the next two stitches. I'm going to start the third stitch in B. I'm going to finish it with A. Three in A, carrying B. Oops. Carrying B, use A. There we go. Start that third stitch with A, switch back to B. I'm carrying A now, and it's six in B. That's the sixth stitch begun with B. I switch back to A. I'm still carrying B though. I still need it a little bit before the end of the row. Three double crochet in A. I start that third stitch with A. I finish it with B. Three double crochet in B. And then I can drop B, give myself a little slack, put it to the back, tug on A to finish that stitch with A, and then I double crochet in the top of the chain two to finish that row. That's stitch number 20. Every row has 20 stitches in it. And this is going to get a little border when it's finished. All right, that was row eight. Row nine, we're closing in the top of the heart now. So right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. The row begins with your chain two. That's in A, that counts as a stitch. One more stitch in A, so two to begin. We jump to B for seven, A for two, B for seven, A for two. And this is the same whether you were making a solid uh, colored heart or an interior different colored heart or the cart that I'm making where you're switching from A to B. So row nine is the same for everybody. 2A, 7B, 2A, 7B, 2A. Chain two with A, counts as a double crochet. Now we want to make sure that we're carrying B until we need it. So B actually ends a little bit before we need it. So as I work the second stitch, or I start the second stitch in A, I wanna make sure I get underneath my B color just so that I carry it. I pick up and start that second stitch with A, switch to B to finish it. So that's two double crochet in A to start the row. And now it's seven in B. I'm gonna carry A. I start that seventh stitch with B. Give myself a little more slack here. I'm gonna tug on A so that it's not bulging out anywhere. I'm switching back to A. There we go. A for two, carry B. Start that second stitch with A, switch back to B. B for seven, carrying A.
start the seventh stitch with B, tug on A, finish it with A, drop B, and it's two more double crochet to finish the row in A. And of course the last one goes into the top of the chain two, which for me is nice and tight here. There we go. Don't worry about the edges of your dishcloth being messy because we're going to put a cute little border on. Cute, simple. We're going to put a little simple border on and that'll just neaten up anything along the side. So there we go. That is row nine. Looking good. Looks like a little heart. And row 10. Row 10 is the last row of color change. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. 4A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 4A. It's exactly the same as row 5, but it is exactly the same for all of us. So whether you're making a solid color heart or not, 4A, 4B, 4A, 4B, 4A. And before I start, a sip of tea. Hello everybody, if you're just joining us, we are making a dishcloth out of our Fair Isle style heart. We do have a tutorial for the Fair Isle style heart, it's linked in the description box down below, so if you need to see a more concise version of that, it's there. And I'm using cotton and a size 45 millimeter hook today to make things a little bit smaller. This is a size 4 medium weight yarn, uh, but I wanted to size it down, I wanted to tighten up my tension a little bit, hence the smaller hook, just so I have a slightly tighter uh, dishcloth fabric. And that's what I'm up to today. Are you using mercerized cotton today? I am not. This is just regular cotton, not mercerized. Um, I imagine you could use mercerized cotton. I just don't like to waste my mercerized cotton on something that's going to get super hard wear in the kitchen sink. So I like to use just regular medium size for dishcloth style cotton. Um, it's the Bernat's, the peaches and cream or sugar and cream or sh peaches and sugar. I don't know, whatever that stuff's called. I think it's all kind of the same stuff. Uh, chat knows. <laughs> Just a regular size four, medium weight, 100% cotton yarn, nothing fancy. Chain two turn for row 10. I'm gonna give myself some slack on the silver. The pink moves back to the other side. And chain two counts, I'm gonna work making sure I pick up my yarn to carry B. So the first, the next stitch is easily done in A, but then the next two stitches, I need to be able to carry B. So I'm gonna start that stitch. I'm gonna pick up B and lay it over top of my hook so that I'm carrying it. I catch it, crochet over top of it. I'm gonna start the fourth stitch in A. So there's my chain two, two full double crochets in A, and I start fourth in A, and then I switch to B to finish it. And then it's four in B, carrying A. Start the fourth stitch in B, switch back to A. Now it's four in A, carrying B. Switch back to B, four in B, carrying A. Oh my goodness, Nico. Goodness gracious, thank you. Nico the Gifting Ninja <laughs> swoops in with 10 gifted memberships. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And congratulations to Christina, Beverly, Anna, Kelly, Cookies, <laughs> Cookies, <laughs> Desiree, Krista, Josie, Jensky, Cheryl. Congratulations, everybody. And thank you so much to Nico. Switching from B back to A, and then I can drop B completely. I no longer need it. The last four stitches of the row are in A. I can even trim my B, but I will wait till the end of this row to do that.
Super generous, Nico. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Nico. <laughs> All right, that is the end of row 10. That is still 20 stitches. I'm gonna snip my red yarn now, or my pink yarn. That's all I needed from that for B. Chain two, turn, and row 11 is just like row one. It is just a solid row of A. So 20 double crochet in A, remembering that the chain two that begins the row is your first stitch. So 19 more, all double crochet, all in color A. And that is it for the graph work. And once we finish this little row, I'm gonna weave in my tails and we're gonna add a little border. Question is, everybody, do I do the border in silver or do I do the border in pink? What do you all think? Pink, 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 pink. Pink, 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 pink. Pink, 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 silver. Pink, 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 pink. I think the pinks have it. <laughs> what do you think, Mr. and Stitches? Uh, it's definitely 99% pink. All right, then I will do pink. For sure. If you would rather, like if you're do, doing one of these yourself and you wanna make the border the same color as color A, when you finish your last double crochet here at the end of the row, in the top of the chain two, you'll have 20 double crochets, including your chain two, in color A. Just don't fasten off, so just stay where you're at. Uh, before I go any further, I'm gonna weave in my pink tails. Um, so that I don't have to think about them at the end. So I'm just going to sneak down here a couple rows. So wiggling it through here. Whenever you're weaving in tails in graph work, keep the color woven in underneath the same colored stitches. That way it will show much less, if at all. How about a little bit of silver first and then pink? Um, you I guess mean that like would, that would extend the border a little bit? Wouldn't? Oh, I see. Like doing two rows of it? Maybe so the pink isn't so close to the heart. Um. Yeah. Just an idea here in the chat from Carolyn. An idea from silver then pink. Oh, so basically two rows of uh, of border. Yeah. Uh, Two sure. rows of border, one sure. silver, one pink. Why not? Penelope says yes in full caps. <laughs> Debbie wants you to alternate colors. <laughs> but then it's going to be a gigantic dishcloth. I think a couple rows isn't such a bad idea. Yeah. Um, I was just going to do one row, but two rows is fine. Oh, come on. Shell agrees with silver, then pink. Silver, then pink. All right. Anyone else agree silver and pink or just straight pink? Yvonne would like to see some peaks. It's going to get it's going to get a little too fancy. Peaks? 
<laughs> I guess like picos is that is that what you mean if it's gigantic it'll be easier for the mister to use well, that's ah. why I want to keep it tiny <laughs> so that it fits better in Jada's hands <laughs> How did I manage that? Oh, I see what I did there. When in doubt, get it out. I know it's just a dishcloth, but I want it to be at least as neat and tidy as I can make it, so. There we go. I'll just pull up on that. All right, pink tails are woven in. I'm not gonna worry about this one because I'm gonna work over top of it. All right, pink and then silver. I like that too, everybody. I am just going to start with a base row of single crochet worked all the way around. So right from where I am, I'm gonna chain one and turn. The chain one does not count as a stitch. I'm gonna single crochet in every single stitch all the way back across what was row 11. So that'll be 20 single crochet across the top. We're gonna start our little border with a row of single crochet all in silver, because why not? I like that idea. Mister, did you, did you just fill up your coffee? No. No. Uh huh. <laughs> I went to get some water. Oh, oh okay. Um, I don't think we have any more coffee. Did you want more coffee? No, no. I'm actually halfway through my cup of tea. I was just wondering if you were going to go do that. If you would maybe heat up some more water for me, but well, I guess you don't since have. Since you're to. making the smaller version of the dishcloth, so I'm... it fits in your hands, <laughs> I will heat up some water for you. I, uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going. Yeah, I just, just to heat it up because I'm, I'm halfway through, but I've, I've been sipping it that it's, it's starting to cool down. Uh, okay, so once you've single crocheted in each stitch all the way across the top, we're going to turn and work our way down, but I like to make just the tiniest little corner. So into the same stitch where I, I, I worked a single crochet, I'm going to chain two just to bend the corner, and I'm going to single crochet in the same place. There we go. A little single crochet right in the same place. So it just creates a little corner, and if you want, you can... You can uh, put a little stitch marker in your chain two corners if you have trouble seeing them. Um, I'm gonna just put a stitch marker right on that little chain right there in the corner. Now, uh, nothing fancy working down the side. We're gonna work two single crochet per row edge and I'm gonna work right around the entire stitch. Um, so there are uh, 11 rows and you want to work two single crochet around each stitch. Now, technically I've worked a stitch already because I put it in the side, or I put it in the same place that the last stitch of that row is, right in the top, but it's sort of it's bent already down the side. So that counts as stitch number one. I'm going to work a second stitch around that top double crochet. And then around each row edge, I'm just going to work right around the, uh, the stitches or the chain two, whatever it is on the side. Two single crochet around each stitch. Uh, because I'm not too concerned about gappiness or anything. This is a dishcloth. Christina would like to know if you could do the entire alphabet. 
Uh, yeah. I think we had plans to do that. It's going to take some time. Absolutely. Um, we should do the whole alphabet and then put it in a, an ebook. Yes, that would be handy. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for reminding us, Christina. I We've do. been actually meant to do that, but. Got it on the list. Time slips away. It does. All right, when you get down to the bottom, these are your turning chains, the two chains from the first row. Work a single crochet around them and then into the bottom or that first chain before you get to that uh, that double crochet. So let's see, you've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is your actual turning chain. So before you actually get to the stitch that's under or the chain that's underneath that double crochet, you want to single crochet in the bottom of the turning chains. Chain two and then single crochet in the same place. And that just creates a little corner for you. I'm going to mark that corner with a stitch marker just so I can see it. And then single crochet in the bottom of each of those stitches. So you'll have 20 stitches across the bottom, 22 down the sides, and 20 across the top. So 20 across the top and bottom, 22 down the sides. Kelly gets a day off tomorrow because of the snowstorm that's incoming. That just makes Mondays so much better <laughs> if you know you have a snow day coming. All right, I'm at the last stitch. I can tell that it's the last stitch because here's my little tail. So I'm going to single crochet into that. Chain two for a corner and single crochet in the same place, which counts as the first single crochet up the side of my dishcloth, I'm going to put a stitch marker in that chain two corner. And because now that counts as the first stitch up the side, I'm only going to work one stitch around that row edge of row one, and then it's back to two stitches per row edge up this side. So basically exactly what you did on the other side. I'm working over top of my little short tail, keeping my tension a little on the tighter side. Two single crochet around each row edge. I hope if you guys are in the pathway of that snowstorm that's coming that you've uh, got cozy plans. <laughs> it's really all you can do when the weather's going to be bad. Winter isn't done with us yet. We may be getting an early spring, but winter isn't done with us yet. All right, I'm at the last row. I'm going to work one single crochet around the side of that row and then into the top of the stitch where I started, I'm going to work a single crochet, chain two, and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet I made and I'm going to fasten off. This looks very neat and tidy. Good idea with the silver and then pink, Carolyn. I really like that. All right, I'm going to snip my yarn. Fasten off, and then I'll take a moment to just weave that tail in underneath those stitches from the previous row. What temperature would you like your uh, boiled water at? Uh, 100 degrees 100? exactly. 99, 101, 111. <laughs> as long as it's bubbling. As long as it's bubbly? Yes. Not not before it bubbles. Not before it It has to bubble. <laughs> You're getting a little demanding now, I think. <laughs> well, I think it's almost ready. Okay. I will take a quick step away. I'm going to finish weaving in this tail, and then I will go heat up my tea. I like to drink my tea with the tea bag in. You guys the same, or do you take your tea bag out, or do you make it properly in a pot? 
I'm lazy. I have a, I have a beautiful collection of teapots, but I never actually use any of them for making tea. I just usually make tea in my mug. And I leave the I leave the bag in because I like my tea strong. But then I also always sort of reheat it with a little bit of hot water. Okay, this is starting to look really cute. I'm gonna put these guys to the side. All right, so finished with the silver, we're gonna pop back into the pink and I'm going to add a row of pink to completely finish it off. I'm also gonna add that little tiny um, loop so that I got something I can hang it with. Uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna take a quick two second break everybody and go reheat my tea. I've got about a half a, half a cup left, so I wanna heat it up for the last row of the border. I'll be right back. I use tea leaves. Oh, I like tea leaves too. I like both. I've got a tea bag. I like tea bags. I like loose leaf. I've got a really cute little tea leaf holder that's like a little house. Sorry, I gotta go heat up my tea. <laughs> I got distracted. Okay, one refreshed hot cup of tea, yum. All right. Oh, lovely, lovely. Okay, let's put this last row of border on. Here we go. So I've got all four of my chain two corners uh, situated. Now, which side do I like best? I guess they're both really the same, aren't they? Hmm, I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, I'm just gonna continue right where I was. Uh, you can switch it if you want. You can just work kind of like going back the opposite direction. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm just going to, I don't really feel like there's too much of a difference between my sides. Uh, so I'm just going to continue on the same side that I was working on. Let's join our yarn. I'm going to make a slip knot on our hook. And I'm going to start in the chain two corner. So I'm going to get my hook in that corner. I'm going to begin with a single crochet. So I'm joining technically with a single crochet. My loop was on my hook. I picked up a loop in the chain two corner space. I'm going to single crochet. So I'm joining with a single crochet. Pull that to the side. I'm going to make a chained loop now. Hi, Connie. Connie, thank you so much. Connie has popped in and gifted a membership and Kevin has won it. Congratulations, Kevin. Oh, 
about 12 chains. A big thank you to Connie. 12 chains and then I'm going to single crochet back into the same corner space. So joining my yarn with a single crochet, chain 12 and single crochet all into that chain 2 corner. So nothing, nothing crazy but that chain gives me the opportunity to hang it. And now I'm going to single crochet in each stitch all the way down the side. I'm also going to work over top of my short tail because I can and it just kind of leaves me with one less tail to weave in. Single crocheting in each stitch and uh, the stitch count down the side will increase by two stitches per side because we're only doing a single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the corner space because it's very small, very tight work. We had a question from Vima here. Yep. Let me see if I can find it. Jada, if you use single crochet instead of double crochet, any idea what will be the dimensions of the square? If you use single crochet instead of the double crochet, well, if your single crochet stitches are roughly um, like two to one, like the height, so if your double crochet stitches exactly double one of your single crochet stitches, it will be roughly the same size. Um, so it, it'll be, uh, like for example, I'll measure this when I'm finished and I'll tell you what the measurements are based on it being double crochets with a single crochet border. And that will be, if your tension, for example, and your hook size and yarn is roughly the same as mine, then it'll, it should be the same whether you're using double crochets, so 11 rows of double crochet, or 22 rows of single crochet. Um, because your single crochets, two single crochets should be roughly exactly the, the same height as, a, as one double crochet. Um, if your tension is fairly even. All right, I'm down in the chain two space. I hope that helps Vima. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the little chain two space. And I don't need my stitch markers anymore. So as I get to the corners, I will remove them. Uh, if you're not sure, Vima, the easiest thing to do would be to make an even smaller sampler of the, sm the sampler. <laughs> so say do um, six stitches by six rows in single crochet and do six stitches by three rows in single crochet and compare them both. Use the same hook, use the same yarn. And if you're six by six in single crochet is equal to six by three in double crochet, you'll know that your tension is, is right on. And you'll also know um, if there's any change, how much that will change your square overall. Single crochet in each stitch all the way across the bottom. And if anybody makes this using uh, double crochet or single crochet and wants to share a photo with us, please feel free to do so. Pop into our Etsy shop, click on a current message thread with me or message seller, and you can upload a photo there. And uh, we'd love to share that with the community, especially if you've got um, information, like anything you may have done differently, the stitches you use, the, the yarn you use, the hook you use, any extra information you want to include would be great because I love to include that in our posts on the community tab um, because I people love to know. You know, sometimes they see a project and they think, oh, that's a cute square, but, you know, maybe it would be more appealing in a different color combination. And, you know, they haven't thought of it in that color combination or they haven't thought of it, you know, in a particular yarn or a certain hook size. So any extra information you want to include when you hand uh, when you sort of include photographs for us, please feel free to do so. I love including that in the in the posts. When you get to the chain two space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. There we go. And I'm going to say it again. Great idea doing the silver and then the pink border. I think that looks very neat and tidy. This looks like a little love letter to my kitchen. <laughs> 
single crochet in each stitch up the other side. If you don't already know, I love cooking. I love to bake. I love to cook. I would happily spend most of my day in the kitchen. So having pretty little dishcloths is like a treat for me. Audrey asks, can this be made into a granny square for our calendar blanket? Um, I'm going to say on the face of it, no. Uh, mostly because the stitches along the sides, so the final row of our squares need to be the right stitch count. Now, if you can manage to get um, your square, if you kind of fiddle with a square and you get it to have the exact same stitch count along each side, so right away, this has got 20, this will be 22 and this will be 24. So right away the stitches don't, the stitch count doesn't match on this little sampler um, because the final stitch counts on our granny squares at the end of row six are currently, is it 23? Let me think, 19, 23. I think it's 23. Um, so you're 23 plus the chain two corner spaces. So that's current, that's a six row granny from our calendar blanket this year. Um, so this one isn't a perfect square. It's a, it's just a slight smidgen off being perfectly square. Um, so it's not going to work exactly. Uh, thank you, Janine. Thank you so much for picking up a pattern. But if you are crochet savvy, so you're a little more savvy about, um, you know, skipping stitches or, or sneaking stitches or making sort of cheating something to work, um, you might want to try a sampler along, uh, like a sampler of one of these with uh, the, the granny squares that we're making for the blanket and, you know, count your edges, check out your tension. Know that, that the, these aren't perfect granny squares. They're not perfectly square, I should say, like the actual granny squares we're using in this year's blanket. So the only reason I, I call a bit of, uh, um, I'm going to call a bit of, I'm going to define a granny square as something that starts in the center and works its way, its way out. Uh, crocheted square motifs can be started, you know, from the bottom and worked like, you know, back and forth. But I think, uh, honestly, a true granny square starts in the center and is worked by row by row by row by growing ever larger because you're going around and around and around um, and working in four corners. So the granny squares that we're using in the Magical Cupboard series this year for the calendar blanket are different in construction than these ones so the tension will be different not to mention the stitch count but uh, I fully endorse experimentation um, so if you feel like you can kind of make it work um, try it try it I would love to know how that works out you can certainly turn these little samplers into like a granny square with a granny square shell stitch edge. We have a, a, a tutorial on that. Um, and it makes a decent granny square. I just don't know that it, they will, they won't work um, with the granny squares perfectly in this blanket. So I don't want to go around saying, yeah, 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 go ahead. Um, thank you, Catherine. <laughs> thank you for picking up a pattern. Uh, Cause I don't want to confuse anybody who, you know, uh, maybe isn't as, accomplished in crochet uh, but like I said experimentation is great so go ahead experiment please please experiment and let us know your findings <laughs> single crochet in each stitch all the way back across the top this might be too cute to use I don't know I'll definitely be using it as a little hot pad Nico oh my gosh Nico Nico, the super generous gifting ninja. <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you, Nico, so much. Holy cow. Nico has just gifted 10 memberships. Goodness gracious, who has won them? Let me see here. Congratulations to Cheryl, Robin, Kristen, Sugarplum, Sandra, Michelle, Jody, Karen, and Wendy. Congratulations, all of you. Nico's hiding in the corner, snickering to herself. She leaps out every once in a while. Ninja stars out some gift, some, some memberships, jumps back into the corner. <laughs> trolls, trolls the mister for five minutes. <laughs> All right, 
last single crochet in the last stitch and then I'm going to join with a slip stitch to the top of the single crochet that I joined my yarn with. So I'm just going to slip that in there and join with a slip stitch. So there I go. I've got a little kind of hanger. Pull out my four corners here. And nice, 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 nice. Snip yarn and weave in tail. So make sure that's nice and tight. Flip it over and I'm going to weave it in underneath the same colored stitches along that row there. I'm going to wiggle my hook in under a handful of them. I agree, Shell. The double border was the right choice. So a big thank you to Carolyn for the suggestion and everybody else who seconded it. I love the way it looks. It also gives it a lot more strength doing two rows of single crochet because the single crochet is a small, tighter stitch. And since this is going to be living out its life in the kitchen sink. <laughs> oh my gosh, Lynette! Hello, Lynette. Thank you so much. My gosh, Lynette, you're so generous. Lynette with another little super sticker. A little super. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lynette is also, she's in the opposite corner. She and, she and Nico have dueling gifting ninja stars. Rosie asks, how many squares would you need for a granny square scarf? Well, it depends on how long you want to make your scarf, Rosie. It's kind of like figuring out how many squares you need for a blanket. You decide first how long you want your scarf to be. Then you make up a square in the design that you want your scarf to be made out of. Measure it when you've got one scarf or square complete. And then you divide that size into the length that you want your scarf to be. So let's say you wanted a five foot long scarf, five times 12, 12 being 12 inches and a foot is 60. So let's say that's a 60 inch scarf you want to make. And you make up a granny square and the granny square works out to be six inches. Well, then you divide six into 60, which is 10, which means you'd need 10. The scarf would have to be 10 squares long and then however many wide. So maybe you only want it six inches wide, fine. Maybe you want it 12 inches wide, so you'd need to double that. You'd need uh, 20 granny squares. So you figure it out just like you would if you were making a blanket. Ooh, this is tight. This tail is not going to come out. No, sir. There we go. All right. Oh gosh. Cute. And I like the silver. Silver and pink. So there we go. There is a dishcloth. So the differences between this dishcloth, um, so we're turning, turning this graph into a dishcloth, and the usual, so the granny square sampler, the little granny sampler, or the fair isle sampler, I should say. My original samplers were all in size four medium weight acrylic yarn with a five and a half millimeter hook. And I tried, you know, the solid colored heart. I think that's really, really cute. Um, I used the open stitch. I also tried one with it in the middle. Those are all acrylic yarns, five and a half millimeter hook. This one is 100% cotton yarn. I went down a full hook size to four and a half millimeter, also known as a seven. And the only thing I did any differently was add two rows of single crochet around the whole thing for a border. So if there's 20 stitches across the top and bottom, that's a single crochet in each stitch for border row number one. That's 20 stitches across the top and bottom. Uh, chain two and single crochet in the same place in each corner. And then single crochet once around this row, around the top and bottom row edges. And then two single crochet around each row edge in the middle so that you have 20 stitches around the top and bottom for row one of the border, 22 single crochet along each side. For border row number two, if you're gonna do that, 
you can at that point add a little chain 12 um, hanger in the corner. So single crochet, chain 12, single crochet in the chain two corner space. Single crochet in each stitch all the way down the side. So now you're going to go from 22 to 24 single crochet. Single crochet, chain two, single crochet in the chain two corner space. That brings your stitch counts along the bottom and the top to 22. Same thing over here, 24. Um, so that's the difference. Very simple little single crochet border. You, of course, can go crazy. Double crochet, half double crochet, uh, the falling leaf stitch, picots, scallops, whatever you want. Shells, we've got a tutorial on how to add the shell stitch to one of these. Um, so you can really border it any way you like. But the cotton and the smaller hook makes for a nice tight little stitch. Um, I'm going to measure this for Vima. So let's see here. I wind up with it being almost exactly six inches wide and almost exactly, almost exactly seven inches. It's six and three quarter inches. So in centimeters for the metric crowd, that is 15 and a half centimeters wide. It is 17 centimeters long. So a little longer than it is wide because it's not a perfect square. Um, and that's using the double crochet with two rows of single crochet. So like I said before, if you wanted to swap out the double crochet for this graph, you could swap in single crochet, but you have to do every row twice using single crochet. So uh, two rows, so you go back and forth for each row, back and forth for each row. It'll work on a mirror image uh, graph um, because the uh, image doesn't change. So you don't have to do any sort of thinking. Um, if it's not a mirror image graph and you're using single crochet, then you have to really think your way backwards. You have to do it in reverse. You have to do the, the graph pattern in reverse on your return pass with single crochet. But in this style where it's completely um, mirror image, you don't have to worry about it. Um, so two rows of single crochet, try your little, your little sampler, do six stitches by three rows in double crochet, and then do six stitches by six rows in single crochet, and it should measure out to be the same. And that way you'll know that it will measure out the same, it'll scale out if you're going to do any of the little graphs using single crochet and not double crochet. Um, and if you do try it, let me know. I'd like to know how it works out. There. Anybody have any questions? I'm going to go to my tea now. It is properly steeped. <laughs> that little refresher. I'd like to thank Nico and Lynette and Ron and Kathy and Connie again for the super thanks, the super chats and the gifting memberships. And um, anybody who's got uh, a membership milestone, if you're a member like Barbara, who wants to pop in with a membership milestone, remember you can do that. You, you can access it by clicking on the little, I think it's the little dollar sign icon at the bottom of the live chat, and you can select membership milestone. You get one of those with your membership per month that you can use. So um, anytime you use that, thank you very much too. It's nice to sort of see you there. Um, I Susan also- Susan has a question. Oh, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you want me to read it out? Uh, Susan, what's the name of that large discount yarn store you've gone to? Uh, the large discount yarn um, store maybe lens mill well, we've lens mills is one and mary maxim i wouldn't call that a discount store but no but they have a clearance mills room is probably the one you're thinking of <laughs> lens mill i think lens, it's lens mill, mill. Mm -hmm. l-e-n-s -L lens mill -L -L. store lensmillstore.ca yeah. and they ship they're from canada but they ship into the united states they without do. any trouble yeah. and most likely uh, across the uh, across the ocean there yes but um always check whenever you're ordering and this goes for anybody anywhere whenever you're ordering anything on the internet from another country check shipping check import fees and if you're unsure about import fees or if your country puts tariffs and import taxes like canada smacks us with every possible thing because the government says what you want to spend money outside of this country well we'll take half of that so uh double check to make sure you're not going to get hit with import fees or extra tariffs or taxes um if you're ordering from outside the country uh because that can be a real bummer if you want to go and you know pick up your package and they won't release it until you you give them like the same amount that you paid for the yarn again kind of thing um 
So double check that, double check shipping and all that. I know Lens Mills will ship within Canada. If you order more than $50, they ship for free in Canada, which is a lovely perk for us Canadians because we don't usually get something like that. Um, but yes, they do have pretty great deals. Look for their deals, go to their clearance page. Uh, I always start in the clearance section because I like my cheap and cheerful deals. <laughs> Look at all the membership milestones rolling in, yay! Sylvia, member for five months. Thank you, Sylvia. Says, thank you for always making my day. Thank you for being here on a Monday with us, Sylvia. Yvonne, hello, Yvonne. Member for one month. Thank you and happy Valentine's Day to everyone. I second that. Tasha, Tasha, member for one month. Says, thank you for your lives. Watching since December has renewed my desire to crochet. Have a great freaking V-Day. Well, that's wonderful. I know sometimes we can kind of get out of the hobby and then we get back into it. And it's all about inspiration. That's another reason I like our community tab. So keep those photographs coming, everybody. I love being able to share your work with everybody else. It is so fun to see things in different colors. And Regina, hi Regina, member for six months. Great way to start my birthday week. Happy birthday. Big birthday tomorrow. Thank you, Jada and Mr. for all you do. Love the lies. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Oh my gosh, Shelly, hi Shelly. Shelly, thank you so much. Shelly says, I'm lazy. So I just started granny and keep adding rows until it's as wide as I want. And then I keep making grannies until it's as long as I want. And that's an awesome way to do it too. If you're gonna make a scarf or a blanket, just make it organically. Shelly's got the right idea. If you're just gonna, you know, you don't wanna, it's a, it's a turn your brain off kind of project and who doesn't love those? That's another great way to do it. Hello, Emily. Emily's been a member for 57 months. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Emily. Emily says, have a fantastic Valentine's Day, everyone. I agree. Everybody have a great Valentine's Day. Whether you're just staying at home and making yourself a treat or planning a, a little self-care spa day, love those. Uh, maybe you're going to go out for dinner. Maybe you're gonna see some friends. Maybe you're actually going on a date. Whatever the case may be, be safe. I think the East Coast is supposed to get smacked down by a nor'easter. So we might actually have a lot of snow coming at the East Coast. But for those of you who do not have bad weather on the horizon, have a safe and happy day regardless. Um, I think I'll be making a chocolate cake for the mister. And uh, I might be using my new dishcloth. I don't know, this is so cute. I might just use it as like a little pot holder on the counter for a while. Uh, I, I really, I like how it came, came out. Um, yeah, anyway, if any of you have questions, we do have a tutorial for this. So uh, we've got that linked below if you need a more concise version of how this looks. Uh, you can check that out. If you have questions, you can leave them on the comment section or here or on the other tutorials, perfectly fine. Um, thank you everybody who has hung out with us today and popped in with a super thanks or a super chat or a membership milestone or gifted memberships. Thank you so much. Thank you for liking the show. Uh, giving us the thumbs up there really helps kind of push the show out there and we really appreciate it. Thank you if you've picked up a pattern. Um, and also, like Mr. and Stitches says, we've got affiliate links. Um, oh my gosh, thank you, GX Track. Thank you so much for picking up a pattern. Um, we've got affiliate links. So if you would rather just buy your coffee and tea uh, through the internet rather than having to leave your house to go get it, <laughs> feel free to use our affiliate links because uh, it helps us out. And um, it's, uh, it's nice to be able to, to sip something different. I like to do that too. I get into the habit of having the same coffee sometimes or the same tea sometimes. Um, sometimes in the mood for a hot chocolate. In fact, I think next Monday, I'm gonna have a hot chocolate instead of a tea or a coffee. Mark my words, it's gonna be a hot chocolate because I feel like I'm still gonna want chocolate after Valentine's Day. <laughs> Pancake day in the UK tomorrow. Oh, that's fun. Yum, yeah, that might be a good idea. Maybe I'll make pancakes tomorrow. Hi, Jada, says Tweedledee. I love that, chiming in from Phoenix. Well, hello, Phoenix. <laughs> um, if you ever arrive late to our live streams, remember that you can just sort of give them 20 minutes after they're finished and you can sit down and watch them all over again. Sometimes the live chat that works along with it, if you want to sit and watch that along with the replay, takes a little longer to load, but it's usually there by the end of the day. Hey, Katie. Katie's been a member for 40 months. Thank you, Katie. Katie says, having a manic Monday. The washcloth's pretty. Mondays shouldn't be manic. Not anymore. Not if you can crochet a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it gets better. I hope Manic Monday turns into a mellow Monday. I like my dishcloth too. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful week. Stay safe. Stay crafty and cozy. We will see you Friday because uh, we will have another video for you on Friday. Uh, Mr. Stitches, anything you want to add? No, I think uh, you covered it all. 
thanks everyone for joining us today and we yeah. will see you friday have a great week everybody take care Bye -bye. and uh happy valentine's day <laughs>